Hey everybody, it's Brad with the Big Family Homestead and today I'm gonna to show you how we grow massive fruits and veggies and all manner of garden goodies with the one, the only, the super fertilizer, worm poop. Well, worm castings, worm casting tea to be more specific. So for those of you who wanna see just the DIY, we're gonna show that first and then the how's it's and the what's it's and the who's it's and our experience that'll come last. So right now, here we go. This is how you make worm casting tea. One of those fish tank air bubblers, some air hose to go with it, the bubbler stones, a paint strainer bag or nylons or something that's real porous like this, some unsulfured molasses, and of course, your earthworm castings. You're also gonna need a five gallon pail. Well, we like five gallons, but you can use however much you like. Five gallons works good for us. Five gallons of water. Now, the trick about the water is it needs to be no chlorine, unchlorinated water. And the way you do that, if you're even unsure or you think you might have some chlorine in the water, as you fill it up, you're gonna go ahead and take your fish bubbler, put the stone on the hose, stick it in here, and let it just run for a few hours and that will take the chlorine right out of your water. Two other things, the worm castings. We like them organic, that seems the way to go. There's a lot of reasons for that. You guys can debate that out in the chat section below. Organic worm castings, we like them organic. The other thing is molasses, the unsulfured kind. If you don't get the unsulfured molasses, it will kill off the beneficial bacteria and you're kind of just wasting your time. Unsulfured molasses. Next, what you wanna do is go ahead and get your fish bubbler and your hose and go ahead and get that hooked on there and your stone, your bubbler stone, get that all set up, ready to go. Then, next, we're gonna get our paint strainer bag and our worm castings. And what we wanna do is we wanna get about, you know, a good softball size amount of these worm castings into the bag. We're gonna tie it up and we're gonna hang it into the bucket, uh, yeah, so here we go. And now we're gonna fill up our paint strainer baggy thingy with uh, the worm castings, and yes, we have spared no expense in this video. We do have a lovely hand model, an extra set of hands because I'm a handy guy, but not quite three handy at one time. So here we go, worm castings in the bag. Okay, next, so we're gonna take our worm castings in our bag and we're gonna go ahead and just tie a knot on here because we're gonna hang it into the water. I'm just using twine. You can use whatever you got on hand. It doesn't have to be anything special, but go ahead and tie that up because you don't want the bag coming uh, completely open when it's inside the bucket. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and take our fish bubbler. We're gonna go ahead and put that down into the water. I like to take a rock or something and weigh it down because sometimes it'll slip up on you and then you don't want that because you want these bubbles to be coming up from beneath the bag. Now let's go ahead and suspend our bag of worm castings. Look at that, see how it's, oh, that's gonna be so nice. We're gonna suspend them above our bubbler and I'm just gonna tie it here on the side you can do it however you like. If you got a clip, a clip works. But I just tie it right on there and then it's going to be delightful, oh so awesome. Now we go ahead and just plug in that bubbler and get the bubbles rocking and a rolling. Ha, ah, magic, okay. Then the last thing you do is you're gonna put in about two tablespoons-ish of your molasses. You're gonna kinda try not to be as, whoa. Messy as Brad, oh, ho, ho. messy, messy, messy. Maybe three tablespoons. But then uh, you're pretty much done. Well, you can just give it a little stir with a, a spoon or whatever so that you don't have big old pieces of molasses hanging down, gloopy, gloopy down on the bottom. Give that a stir. And then now, one real quick tip here. If your bag is not hanging directly over your bubbler, this one's actually working pretty good. But if it's not hanging directly over your bubbler, sometimes I'll go ahead and take a, a knife and just make a small notch here. This one's not a problem. But uh, sometimes if you make a little notch there, it'll sit just right 
so that you've got that oxygen coming up through the pores in your bag and uh, bringing all these goodies to life. Now, I know I said we're done, and we're technically done with the worky part of this, but the deal is this. You gotta let it go for about 24 hours. Just let it percolate, let it do its thing. And what you're gonna see is as the bacteria come to life, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, there's gonna start to be a foam that comes up on the top. Don't worry about that, but you wanna use this stuff in your garden within about 24 hours. Just get it out there and use it. You don't want to let this go a long time because everything dies off. And that living bacteria that we're going to talk about here in a second will not be living anymore. It's going to be, it'll get gross after a, a bit. So 24 hours and, and well, here's, here's more to talk about. All right. So now you know how to make it. Well, what's actually happening? Well, what's actually happening is that molasses is, is a, it's a basic sugar. There's a lot of sugar in the molasses. And what's happening is the bacteria that's inside those worm castings is coming to life. And think of it like kind of like a bread going, you know, the yeast going after sugar. And so what's happening is they're coming to life. They're eating that sugar, the molasses, and they're creating this massively awesome pool of millions and millions of beneficial bacteria that when you put them in your garden directly, by the way, you can water directly straight onto the plants, onto the leaves, that's fine. Uh, they're going to add those beneficial bacteria directly to your garden. Now, some things that you're going to want to know that are just side awesome benefits. Not only are you going to get the awesome growth, the super fertilizer, well, another benefit is in our experience, you know, because everybody says there is no deer repellent. Well, the deer around us in the past, they don't like it. If you put this on your plants right after, you know, it's rained and now it's dry and you got a few days of dry and you put this on your plants for whatever reason, the deer just don't like it. And like I said before, you can direct water. You can put it right in the soil. That's nice. Uh, but you can also go straight on the leaves. That's awesome. And boy, oh boy, it's all about the good bacteria. That's why this stuff works. That's why it rocks. And if you went with the organic actual worm castings, this is an organic fertilizer that is kicked up. It's the next level, next gen type stuff. So honestly, that's it, folks. Uh, share your experience down below, but before you leave, we've got a special visit coming up here in a sec. Don't forget to subscribe. It really does help our family out, and that's honestly it. I'm, I'm, I'm Brad. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm, the worm tea is going to be in the garden soon, and that means bigger, nutrient-dense everything. So anyway, I'm Brad with the Big Family Homestead. You guys have an amazing and blessed day. Now, before the video is completely over, I would like to say a very special heartfelt thank you to Krista, our hand model, our worm casting hand model. Honey. It's great moisture. No. You have done better than any other worm casting hand model I have ever seen in my entire life. Thank you, dear. You rock, babe. There we go. <laughs>